trans man. He and his wife are smack dab in the middle of creating a family. Insecurity, hormone imbalances, loss of bodily autonomy, and the exhaustion of new parenthood test the limits of this resilient queer couple. The short film, Lee Baby, was entered in the LGBTQ category at the 2024 Oxford Film Festival and received honorable mention during the award ceremony. Join me for a conversation with Leah Raitt to discuss their film, Lee Baby. Great. Uh, my name's Leah Raitt. My pronouns are she, they, and I worked on the film Lee Baby as the producer, director, and co-creator. Uh, I had a lot of fun watching this film, uh, and I also felt like I learned a lot uh, in, in just about family, mm -hmm. uh, and then also I felt like I already knew a lot just about family. Uh, can you tell me uh, what made you, what motivated you to create this short film? Yeah, first of all, yay, that's happy to hear because we made it, um, you know, by and for LGBTQ people, but also anyone who is looking to expand their family. So when I get feedback, um, for example, like my sister-in-law or my mom um, have the can can really relate to things in the story. It feels really nice that we're not just a queer story for only queer people. That people are finding resonance throughout because it's a universal experience. Um, but we did want to tell a story through an aspirational lens that was specifically centering a trans man and a trans father-to-be. There's a scene where um, they're in the kitchen the morning where he is going to do egg retrieval mm -hmm. surgery and his wife says, uh, oh, I spoke to our favorite receptionist. She asked how you like your eggs retrieved and starts <laughs> listing different ways you could do eggs. Well, that was something that was completely, that was a fun little improv that the actor Ali Spadoni and I came up with when we were moving from one location to another and so I got to say Ali I want you to do that to Eli in the scene but like we're not going to tell him so Just, it was a genuine reaction yeah so we kind of we kind of wrote and riffed together on this like improv so we kind of sketched it and I said I go yes run with it and so we let the scene linger which is something I like to do anyways and she threw that in and it, so he has this reaction he goes he says something like, oh, you shit, you scared me so much. And it was completely <laughs> genuine. And the whole rest of the scene, she just like, she took it to a whole nother level. And so there's moments like that, that I feel like I really see my participation in a way that wasn't, I'm sitting here writing the script with mm. you. Yeah, I, I loved that moment. Uh, so it's yeah. interesting to hear that, how, how that came about. Yeah, thanks. I, I liked hearing too, that one of the first things you said was you had fun with it because it is, some heavy subject matter at times, but I really tried to tackle it like I was directing a sitcom just to kind of balance some of that out because we're catching this couple and a lot of their private moments and I just think that there's always space for comedy there and I didn't, my fear was that the film could turn into like a trans Hallmark <laughs> movie. <laughs> um, so, yeah, those moments of levity and comedy, I think, really help. Uh, there's a, a, an important... Uh, well, in, in storytelling, there's always, you know, the conflict. Uh, and then this leads to... Uh, the, we see the couple in therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me uh, what was that experience like uh, in front of the camera and behind the camera? Of the therapy scene? Mm -hmm. Well, the therapy scene was the very first thing that we shot. Um, and this is my very first time directing. I've produced before and I've acted, but I had not directed. So the therapy scene was particularly interesting <laughs> because there was all of these learning curves happening. Um, and so, I mean, I, just what pops in my head for me was everything was set up. The AD said rolling and I was walk, looking around like, is somebody, like, what's happening? <laughs> And I'm like, oh, I'm the person who's supposed to call action. So um, in the way, in that way, I was just really felt like, oh, this is real. I'm thrown in. Um, but 
it was also interesting watching the way that like the actors were working together because we had this therapist role that was a friend of mine kind of running coming in and doing us a favor right and she had she was kind of on a tight schedule and then we have the two lead actors and the actor Ali Spadoni is he had recently gone through a c-section and is experiencing heavy postpartum so she was very much had an acting coach and was really like di like diving into the physicality and the mood of that and um, Eli's having this experience of oh my gosh we're doing it we're making this movie that I wrote I'm like mm -hmm. overjoyed and so it was an interesting mixture of energies all coming together and I think the whole team figuring out like what are these next three days going to be like um, so that was fascinating I don't know if that fully answered your question around like why why there why the therapy scene but I'll pause there for a moment <laughs> Uh, so, one of the, the moments that I really loved in the therapy scene was the therapist saying, it's okay if we end early. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I've had therapy sessions like that. Yes, same. Uh, but I don't think I've ever seen that sort of acceptance depicted on screen. Yeah, we can did consult with um, a therapist who is a friend of Eli's who's also... Um, an LGBTQ per person and so we wanted to be really truthful to that um, there was a decent amount of cutting that happened in that scene so um, some things in the original script like I mean she was just having a total meltdown so there was not gonna be a way that they could move forward with that therapy session necessarily mm. um, but I did think it was important for us and the actor we cast as the therapist was also queer um, that like my therapist has told me that before has been like let's end early like do you need to end early i'm like yeah i actually don't need you to witness me crying right now i can just allow myself to do that on my own for another 15 minutes so yeah there was kind of an acceptance i think and i think queer people it's one of our superpowers is that oftentimes we under like we can allow other people to have feelings we understand like yeah have your feelings that's okay and we can come back to this a little bit later if we need to. Not all queer people, so that's a generalization, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I think queer people more than most, because uh, you have to deal with uh, you know, bigotry and prejudice. Uh, and a lot of times, like that's coming from family members. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think it's important that stories like this are told uh, and that people can see what it's like mm -hmm. uh, and I'm curious uh, if you have uh, you mentioned Roe v. Wade uh, but I'm curious how you hear you know a story like Next Benedict uh, knowing that, that that kind of story happened this year uh, but this kind of movie is being made this year mm -hmm. uh, how do you how do you see the world today well, I'm going to start my response to that by going back to what you were speaking of earlier, of the, um, the resilience of queer people. And I look to queer people, my trans friends in particular, as some of the best guides to liberation work because it is not easy to um, be out and visible. It is especially not easy when you have obstacles of things like you, your family cannot honor your chosen pronouns or you cannot access gender affirming care, which all medical doctors say this is life saving and we need it. And yet we have last year was a record number of anti trans legislation attempting to be passed. This year there's already been at least 15 anti-trans bills coming at us and at youth and adults. Um, and I work with youth as well, so I see this firsthand. Um, I work at a, I teach at the Governor's School for the Arts and I see students who experience what it's like to live and work for three weeks in a space that is going to affirm them. and. Um, and then the day the parents come, you know, where what's everyone's pronouns today? And there's a lot of things we have to change because that is what they need to be safe. So what does it feel like to be in this 
world, it's I have it's enraging and um, it is a choice every day to choose um, to choose joy and to choose pride and. I myself am, you know, a white-bodied person. I'm queer, I'm non-binary, but I have this gift of being a bridge in many ways because I can have conversations with my family members, for example. I've been able to call them in and creating this film. I can now, I've have, I'm having conversations with them and watching them open up and my mom become an advocate for trans students through the course of this in a way that that more than anything was, is what we want to do with this yeah. film. Um, so I also think uh, if we have to look at who is the most oppressed and we need to center and uplift them. And for me, a lot of my life mission and work is trying to do that because I have it even easier than many of my other friends do. Some of the things that you said have been beautiful and powerful. Thank you. <laughs>